thing right here is our local fast food vegetable dumplings and meat dumplings it's cheap it's fast and it's really good and you never really get sick of them You know, it would be a crime to come to Bhutan and not visit one of our songs. Acho, songs. What Acho means here, songs, these majestic forts which were historically the. No need to tell them everything. We'll take them there. Now, why do you still feel the need to call me Acho all the time? He pretends he doesn't like being called Acho Big Brother because it reminds him of his. I heard that. Every district in Bhutan has a zong, monastery fortresses. The first ones were built in the 17th century by the saint who unified Bhutan into a nation state, Shabdung Nao Namgyal. So they're all built in very strategic locations to defend each valley. This is our Thimpu Zong, and since it's in the capital, it also holds office for His Majesty the King and the center of our new system of government, a young democracy guided by our king. You know, it does look like it's overlooking the whole Pimpu city. It is definitely majestic and grand, but personally, I have my other favorites. Which zone do you think is the most impressive? Punaka. And Punakha Dzong is not only beautiful, but it plays a major role in the history of Bhutan. And Shabdung Rinpoche, he... The unifier of Bhutan. He slept here one night between the two rivers and had a dream where he heard the prophecy of Kuru Rinpoche. Then and there, he decided to build a Zong on the exact same location where he had the dream. So this Zong was built on a very auspicious location. Acho, let's tell them about the prophecy. It's built at the confluence of the two rivers and at the edge of the mountain, which looks like an elephant's trunk. Now, the meeting of the two rivers symbolizes the union of wisdom and compassion, and the mountain, which looks like an elephant's trunk, symbolizes the might of the Buddhist path. It is even believed that the Zong was constructed entirely in one year. Legend says that Shabdung Rinpoche, he bound all the spirits and gods of this land to servitude, to help him in the construction. And much later, much, much later, our first king was enthroned here. This used to be the, this district used to be the capital until they moved it to Thimpu in the 1950s. So this zone has a lot of political history, history of our country, of Buddhism. And that's still what all zones are about today. They're still used as centers of both political and religious activities. For me, it's visually impressive without even having to know the stories behind it. Just taking it in for a while. It's also called the Palace of Happiness. Well, it makes me happy. You notice how different the climate is here. That's the strange wonder of Bhutan. We're such a tiny, tiny country, but we have so many different altitudes that the climate and vegetation just changes within a few hours' drive. For example, it's almost tropical here, although it's windy. But while driving back to Thimpu, we crossed this mountain pass of an altitude of almost 3,110 meters. And from this path right here, you'll be able to see some of our highest mountain peaks. I suppose this is what makes our country such a historically holy place. To be so close to the mountains, the very height of nature, 
It makes us question ourselves, our inner selves, calling us to a search for the profound. You know, we're both city people, both grew up in Thimpo. Learned both the virtues and vices of an urban area. But most of our country is actually rural. Sustained by agriculture. Actually, just a generation ago, life was so different here. Before the 1960s, before our third king modernized Bhutan, we didn't even have any roads, no school system, not even a currency. Can you imagine that? We exchanged goods, a, a lump of butter for a small bag of rice. Imagine what not knowing what money is does to your sense of worth, your sense of life, place. Talking about sense of place, let's go to Kichul Hagang, one of the first temples ever built in Bhutan. Of course. A long, long time ago, this was before Bhutan was even a country. It was believed that there was this giant demoness lying all across the Himalayas from Tibet through Bhutan down south, preventing the spread of Buddhism. And at that time, the Tibetan king, the great Songsen Gempo, we're talking 7th century, he decided that the only way to suppress this demoness was to build 108 temples simultaneously, placed carefully on different parts of her body. This temple was built on the demoness's left foot. As the oldest temple in Bhutan, Kichul Hagang holds a special place in the heart of most Bhutanese. We've been showing you quite a lot of spiritual sites recently, but don't get us wrong, we Bhutanese also know how to enjoy ourselves. Whoa! 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 